William L. Sauter was born on May 27, 1926, in Vancouver, BC. Graduating from McGee High School, Bill set off to become a chemist, but while at the University of British Columbia, he switched to commerce, a faculty that had a profound effect on his business career and his personal life. I was at a girls' cottage at Crescent Beach after exams at UBC, and he was at a boys' cottage, and he came over one night, and that was it. What it was was the beginning of a life together that included raising eight children and building two exceptional world-class companies. Dr. Sauter graduated from the University of British Columbia in 1948 with a Bachelor of Commerce degree and quite literally went to work the next day with his father in a molding shop that bore the family name. I was told by my father when I was not very far into my business career in the first year or two that you had to do everything in the most honest and honorable way you could and then your reputation would follow you. So I've always felt that was awfully good advice. By the early 50s, Bill was in charge of the company, and over the next 20 years, he carefully grew Sauter into a well-respected firm. Uh, first move to expand the company was uh, he expanded into the door business. He bought a door manufacturing company that was based in Richmond, BC. Bill Sauter was careful not to expand any further afield than the time it would take to get home for dinner. He had a philosophy of trying to grow the business within two hours of our home so that he could be home for dinner every night and on the weekends be able to spend time with his family and, and family came first. When we first were married and had small children, he would bring his work home and then uh, I'd put the children to bed and he'd do his work. We'd have dinner first. And, but he never sat down when I was working. He always took up whatever chore I was doing and did it with me. And that included changing the baby, feeding the baby, whatever. At work, the business continued to grow. His next move was into hardwood flooring, a portion of the business he grew into the largest hardwood flooring distribution company in North America. Shortly after entering the hardwood flooring business, Bill then turned his attention to the forest industry. In the mid-1970s, he invested in a cedar sawmill, and in 1978 through into 79, he used that sawmill as part of the purchase price and invested a bunch of the company's money and bought into what was then called Wanak Industries. Interfor acquired um, some of the coastal assets of Fletcher Challenge in uh, I think the late 1980s, um, acquired um, uh, Primex Forest Products in, uh, in the early 2001 period and then we bought uh, Crown Pacific in the U.S. in 2004 and another business in the U.S. in 2005. Now Interfor is one of the largest uh, lumber companies uh, operating in British Columbia. Along the way, Bill Sauter continued to live by the principles he held dear. Integrity, vision, and leadership. He was a person of extremely high integrity. Uh, my be father believed that uh, telling the truth was important to the degree that even if it cost you something or even if it hurts you, uh, that you were better to tell the truth. I would like to think that we have not ever given in to the pressures of to be successful, we cut a corner of any kind, in ethics, in integrity, in environment. We try very hard. Over the years, Bill Sauter faced some very difficult challenges. At different times, both of his businesses were in serious trouble. In the early 80s, Sauter Industries needed Bill, and then later, after retiring, he returned to Interfor at a time he felt his skills were needed. He asked me to join him in 1998, Bill was stepping back into the CEO's role. He felt there were some changes that needed to be made in the company. And I asked him why he was stepping back in. And he explained that to him, it was, it was a matter that he felt that he had to deal with. Not because it was going to enhance his personal wealth, but because he had a responsibility to the company, to the people that had bought shares in the company, for the people that worked in the company and the communities that we operated in, to put things back on track. Throughout the years, Bill and Marjorie Ann were amazingly generous, both with their time and their financial support of a wide variety of organizations. My wife and I don't particularly believe in doing our charitable work, our philanthropies, publicly. There's been a couple that we've had to, but mostly we have not. 
and I, I get more satisfaction out of that. Of course, not all of the Sauter family's donations were kept anonymous. One of the few times he allowed his name to be attached to the subject of his generosity was at the UBC School of Commerce. We wanted Bill's name and his family's name in what he stands for. Throughout his life, Bill Sauter served UBC in a number of ways, as a member of the Board of Governors and later chair. Eventually, he was elected Chancellor of the University. In 2003, he endowed the Faculty of Commerce and Business Administration with the largest single private donation ever made to a Canadian business school. Bill was very interested in, in making a contribution and he understood that he wanted to create opportunity for the next generation. And that was really the big motivation for him. He wanted, you know, as he would say, I want the kids to have the opportunity for what I had um, and the opportunity to realize their potential. When Bill Sauter passed away, he left a legacy of vision, integrity, leadership, and generosity.